Okay, members and fans. So what is this? Day four? I think. There's already three videos up, so this will be the fourth video. So this is four, day four, right? I've been up for about an hour. It's 11 o'clock now. My first cup of tea. Just starting to wake up. I'm kind of sore, sore and tired, right? You know, when you push yourself all day long, right? You're working really hard. Uh, you just got to kind of maintain on it, eh? And it's been like this pretty much ever since I moved into this house. So I've been kind of conditioned. And I was kind of conditioned for it before I moved in because when you have multiple children, right, you end up working hard, especially if you live in houses and stuff like that and work on nonprofits. Anyway, um, I don't know where my daughter is. She didn't come home last night. Um, I think maybe she's just a little nervous about going to this program or something, having the social worker drive her, you know. That's like the enemy taking you for lunch, <laughs> right? So, I don't know how that one works. I don't know how, I really don't know how the provincial government can foster abusive relationships between their employees under a public sector service agreement where the employee is abusive towards the client because we still haven't dealt with the fact that the employee is the one that started the chain reaction where my daughter is to where she is today. My daughter still has no hair. She still has scabs on her, open wounds on her head. She's addicted to the needle. You know, she's been doing drugs for six months straight because of the initial, you choose, you choose your grandson or you choose your daughter kick out your daughter or we take your grandson. That still hasn't been, been dealt with. And from that point forward, my daughter has been spiraling down and they dragged it out for so long that she may never recover because this program that they're sending to, sending her to, you know, six months later, there's only a 60% chance of being successful. And with where my daughter's at right now, it would be very, very difficult for her to maintain considering everything that she's been through out in the streets for the last six months due to her drug addiction, to heroin injection, which she did not have until this public service employee came into my house with her co-worker and kicked out my daughter. And now she wants to drive her six months later to a rehab program while she's trying to needle in her ear. Well, are you sure you want the baby to be with your mother? There's something wrong with your mother, you know. There's something wrong with your sisters. There's something wrong with your grandfather. There's something wrong with your, uh, you know, your brother. There's just something wrong with your family. Uh, but we don't consider them a family because we don't acknowledge them in court. You know, you have no family. The only family that Andre has, supposedly, in terms of the, what this social worker thinks, is Sierra. And that's it. What about the rest of us? He grew up with us. You know, we helped to raise him. So, none of those issues have been dealt with. We're still, we're still kind of like on the same foot, starting off with the same bullshit. You know, playing the same games with the same with the same human being that wants to consider herself to be, you know, a control freak. So, I don't know. I don't want to get mad. I got, I got to save my energy, you know, from a house, right? I think today I'm going to do one load of laundry because I'm not in the mood to be lifting over 2,000 pounds of water today. But definitely one at some point. You know, not right now. I got to do dishes first, right? My dad doesn't help me with these things anymore. He can't. And, of course, the kids don't eat up here. They, they come and they cook, and, you know, my daughter will do whatever, and the dishes will pile up. But at the end of the day, I'm the one that does the dishes. So I'll do the dishes, you know, probably do another load, maybe two loads of laundry, getting caught up with that. I started clearing out the garage. Everything that I put out in the road yesterday is pretty much gone. So, you know, I'll probably grab some more stuff and just, you know, I'm just giving it away. Right? So it's 
be another pile of stuff be picked at and we'll be gone. Um, I'm working in Andre's room today, his room that's been pretty much vacant since the day they took him out of here, right? And it's going to be his room, and it's going to remain his room. He has a family. This video is a reminder that he has a family who loves him very much. We're all sick over this, and we're all depressed over this. We're all feeling hopeless over this. We're all discouraged and, you know, disappointed with the justice system and with just the way everything seems to work. But then at the end of the day, back in 2003, when you get kicked out of your house with five dependent children, you can't really be that surprised, you know, because there's a lot of illegal activities going on on a political level in this province. And this is this just happens to be one of them. You know, the government talking about how it wants to save money and this and that and blah and, you know, poor people are taking the brunt of it. But yet the middle class are making, you know, over $2,000 per child just, you know, because social workers are looking in the community to see which one is easy to take away from a family. And then sit up there and say, well, that's not a family. Andre doesn't have a family. His mother's a junkie now. So, you know, we don't need to pay attention to her. Right? We'll just make her think that we, we like her and we're trying to help her. Six months later, you're still trying to help her. You know how much damage has been done to her in the last six months? Her eyes are going on her. She told me, I'm starting to not be able to see very well, Mom. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, you've been through a lot, right? Like, you need 26 years old and you can't see? Like, what the hell? Maybe it has something to do with this stuff up there. Right? I've taken her to the doctor. She got a cream. I don't know what to do. But the longer they keep Andre away from home, from his family, the more my daughter is going to spiral down, and that's just the bottom line. They're using him to destroy lives, that's it, on top of doping him up and taking him to counselors, questioning, well, why is he angry? Well, I don't know, maybe because you don't know who he is, first of all. You know, maybe you took him in from away from an environment that he was happy in and he was growing and thriving and he was smart, you know, playing piano and, you know, and was learning to speak words and, you know, and you took that all away from him. And you stuffed him in some room with some crazy fucking foster care parent that wants to dope him up with pills so she can make $2,500 a month off of him. Crying, oh, he's a difficult child. Oh, I can't handle him. Oh, well then what the hell are you a foster caregiver for? You need to resign yourself. You're a kidnapper. You're not a foster caregiver. You're just a money-grubbing bitch. And I'm telling you right now, once I'm done organizing this house, because I know it's been pretty havoc around here with my daughter running in and out, making a mess and everything else, all my kids depressed, you know, just whatever, algae growing on the porch, you know, just life in general, you know, have, have, have this, this, this God foreseeing, you know, almighty, white is right, 26 year old, you know, desecrating my family. You know, she's already put us in the freaking grave and put the freaking hammer on the coffin there with the nails. You know, we don't exist in her eyes. I mean, this girl's got some serious... She's a girl. She's not a woman. She's a girl. She's got some serious psychological problems. It's nothing to do about respecting a social worker. Okay, call it for what it is. And then I'm going to have some time to do some other things. You know, write this foster parent association that's in bed with the government you know right up in there in a freaking legislative assembly under Hansard now how is that supposed to be a non-profit doesn't sound like no non-profit to me it sounds like an extension to the government it's an, or just another arm creating jobs creating jobs what what is that called uh, what, what are those grave diggers called you know they go and they they dig the grave and they make the, the hole in the ground. Is that what they created, that kind of a job? They take one child out of a family of eight, and then the other seven they just bury into the ground? Is that job creation? 
kill off seven and milk off one? Well, more resources for the one that's doing the milking, right? Anyway, I'll start my day. Okay, members and friends, I'm here with my dad and we're talking. And I'm having a really tough day today because what happens is I get into these panic attacks, right? And if I'm thinking too much, you know, I, it's hard to focus on whatever. And I'm doing piddly stuff, so piddly stuff is annoying, right? And it's hard enough to focus on that stuff because, you, again, you don't seem like you accomplish anything, but you are. So, but what's happening is, is right now my daughter is supposed to be going into rehab today into this program at Abbotsford, which is so supposedly accredited by the government. It's just another extension of the Ministry of Children and Family Development. It has a success rate of 60%, 40% not, right? And um, initially my daughter was supposed to go in there December 6th. Well, she went, they said they were going to put her in a week later. But instead of putting her in with the program with the baby when she was actually healthy and waiting with the baby to go, or leave the baby here and go by herself for three months either, or she was healthy before this, all this other shit occurred, you know, they kicked her out on December 11th. So my daughter's been doing drugs for like six months, right? And like, as I said earlier, you know, her scalp is not healed. I don't know how to help her with that. She got a prescription and that, I don't even think it's, it's because it's something to do with the drugs, it's something to do with mental illness, it's something to do with, you know, maybe she's wearing a wig, you know, there's, there's, Lots of variables to that. But here's, here's the issue. You know, I've, there's, there's people on the Internet under certain groups that talk about violence against women. And, 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 you know, I have a son, right? You know, I have two sons. But one son, you know, I have a lot of conversation with. And, you know, in today's society, you know, women have learned that they can perpetrate violence up against a man and then, you know, stand back and, woo, you know, I'm the victim. And ch nine times out of ten, you know, it will be the man that will be, uh, you know, ostracized for for domestic violence right um, and and that's not to say men don't do it because they do right just as but women do it as well they just do it in a different way right um, unless of course the woman's an actual bully and you know wants to do that and then you know that's more blatant <coughs> but what's going on here is you know they're there you know my daughter was in an abusive relationship with her boyfriend and the social workers tried to, at one point in the beginning of when the baby was born was to force them together live in a basement suite so they could set the stage to go in there and take the baby and because they already don't like me because when I was looking after that little girl for three and a half years right and it came time for me to leave that rat infested freaking shanty shack that I was living in you know they wanted me social services wanted me to leave the little girl in the house by herself because the mother would go off and do newspapers at night downtown so the little girl would be down there sleeping by herself with these fucking rats running around. And I used to phone up on the phone and scream! I'd say, no, you get your butt down here and you come down here and you make sure that this mother has some place for this little girl to go because if you don't do that, I'm sleeping on the floor with this little girl until I know that you have some proper uh, daycare for her. Oh, don't talk to us like that. You know, we're... You know, just leave and we'll come in in the middle of the night and we'll catch the mother leaving the baby by her, the little girl by herself. And I think the little girl by this time was 12, right? Still young. Because when I moved in, she was 8. When I moved out, she was 12. I was there for three and a half years. I started looking after her one month right after I moved in, right up until the day I left. And she slept in my room with the kids. There was one little shanty shack, right? I had all the girls in one room. And the damn fucking rat was in the bag. And we're all like, hee hee hee, <laughs> you know? But uh, because social services got tired of me calling up, screaming on the phone for them to have the mother go find alternative daycare before I left for the evening, uh, the little girl did do that. So, you know, there's a rift. There's a rift. So, th you know, I'm sure they have that on their file somewhere. And that's not including the native girl that I was looking after for a while. You know, even then I had to phone them up and tell them to control that girl after she moved out because she started stalking my 12-year-old, right? Because of whatever her shit was in her head. So the point is, you know, they wouldn't, and, and what they're using now, now, now they're using um, 
well, they, you know, they come to the realization, finally, after all this time, that her, my daughter's ex-boyfriend, you know, has a violent fucking past, right? You know, he could be a detriment to her, right? So now they're using that as, a, well, it's a good thing you're not talking to him, and it's a good this, that. But they fail to acknowledge that they themselves have perpetrated violence against my daughter on the day that they kicked her out on December 11th with absolutely nothing into the fucking middle of winter, which started the chain reaction to where my daughter may very well have gone missing again because nobody knows where she is. Unless, of course, it's 2.11 in the afternoon and she's with the social worker right now. So the social worker can drive her here, pick up her stuff, be her friend for a fucking day, and then drive her off at some accredited program that we know nothing about other than the social worker likes it and uses it to her advantage when it suits her fucking need. You know? Well, we'll give it to you a week after December 6th, but when December 6th comes along and the 7th and the 8th and the 9th and the 11th, they decide to kick her out instead. So obviously it didn't suit her then, back in those days, because she had to put her out in a violent situation without her methadone, without the support of her family. And then six months later, still glue herself onto my daughter, you know, with her abusive fucking bullshit. I'll drive you to some program after I practically got you fucking murdered off 15 times in the last six months. Like, I'm so angry. We've asked three times by letter to change the social worker. What is it with this provincial government and these people forcing vulnerable individuals into precarious situations where they have to defend for themselves, basically? Because the cops aren't doing anything about it. Oh, sure, they come in and they do a little sweep every now and then and they harass everybody. But you know what? That's not helping the situation. That just enables it. You know, it doesn't make those people feel any better than they're already feeling. It just makes them more angry, more frightened, more feeling insecure, more defeated. You know, they wear them down. You know, it's like just wear, wear, wear Mama Lynn down, you know? Financially break her, you know? Just let her fucking go crazy with worrying about her kids and, you know, and just... Because at the end of the day, that seems to be the pattern. Wear them down. Six months later, she's going into a program with an abusive woman that kicked her out in the fucking streets that has the nerve to sit up there and say, don't be with your boyfriend because your boyfriend is abusive. And if I catch you with your boyfriend, I'm going to take away your, your, your little son again. And lots of people are going through this, but yet the social workers themselves are abusive. And that's the point of this rant. It's the social workers that are abusive. It is the social workers that are perpetrating abuse in our communities. Because it doesn't start and stop with this family. It's a systemic problem. So how do we fix the problem? You know, if you put a request in to change the social worker, you don't want to hear, oh, well, you don't want to change the social worker because if you change the social worker, it's harder on the child because the new social worker can't fucking read and figure it out real quick, you know, what the child needs. You know, these, 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 whatever these are, need to put themselves onto somebody you know, attach them, glue themselves on, live somebody else's life for them while they abuse them so that they can figure out how to fucking fix the problem that they created. Like, what kind of bullshit is that? The woman, she's not even a woman. She's a girl. The girl is abusive. I'm not going to say all her co-workers are abusive because... You don't want a broad sweep, right? But you know what? There's quite a few of them that are. Because this is a newbie coming into the game. And if she's as vicious at this age, I can only imagine what she's going to be like in 15 freaking years from now after she gets a few more of those children in apprehension and in foster care and adopted out because she's a big bad fucking bitch just, you know, carrying her, her ping, 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 ping. No? That's what upsets me. How can they force my daughter, who is very, very vulnerable, and I've seen it. 
waiting with her son beside her for this program, not even thinking about being homeless. I bought her a bed. I bought her a bed. She never even got to sleep in her new bed because the social workers kicked her out of the house. My daughter is like four foot nine, less than a hundred pounds. You figure it out without her methadone and a bunch of fucking predators in the community just waiting to, to exploit her. And the social worker knew that. And she's known it for six months. And she's still using my grandson as a tool to manipulate my daughter so that my daughter acts out and is too afraid to go into their accredited fucking program three days before court. We're going into what? Court number 10? Yeah, and now they're sending her off to some program with their buddies, their fucking bum buddies. You know, everybody doing a little bum rush, you know? Let's get all fucking excited here. Like it's bullshit. We need a new social worker. We need a mature woman that actually has some freaking decency about herself. Not some...
No? What other options is there? Where else would she be? With her friend, the social worker? Her abusive fucking, let me stick myself on you? You know, I can't, you know, just let me stick myself on you? No, like, go away. You're abusive? And you destroy people's lives. And the Ministry of Children and Family Development need to get into their fucking whatever it is there that allows these people to do stuff like this and then convince themselves that they're mentally okay. And then point fingers at normal people that live normal lives in the real world and use their dysfunctions as a means to import themselves and stick themselves into the family. And the only sole purpose is not to help the family. It's just to take the little children away and put them someplace else so that their friends can make mad money. Right? Right. <laughs>